Hey everyone, this is the first video in a series I'm going to be doing on testing in JavaScript using Jest. Today we're going to cover some of the basics. If you'd like to keep up to date with future videos, then feel free to subscribe. So first of all, we just have an empty directory here. And first of all, we're going to initialize our node project using npm init. And we're going to just go with all the defaults. And this will give us our package.json file. So next we want to install our dependencies. And we just have one dependency here, and it's Jest. We're going to save it as a dev dependency. So now Jest is finished installing. We can see it showing up here in our dev dependencies. And we have this test script. So instead of running this, which is the default, we're just going to run Jest like this. So now if from here we use npm run test, this is going to run the Jest command. We can see it's failing with an error now because it doesn't have any test files yet. So now we're going to create what we want to test and our test file. So today we're going to be testing hosts. And this isn't a computer host. This is a host, like a host of a party. And this host is going to be able to greet people. So we're going to create a class for this host because we like doing things in an object oriented way. So we have a, a host class. And now we're going to define a method on this. And we're just going to define the method as greet. First of all, this is just going to return a message that says hello. So if we save that, we now have this class, which is a host, and it's able to greet. So now we just want to export this using module.exports. So now we've exported this class. So now that we have this class, we want to create a test for this class. So to do that, we're going to create another file called host.test.js. And the name of this is important because Jest basically picks up file names that include this regex using the test here. As we can see, it's, it's here. Um, so now if we run this again, because we have this test file, we can see it's able to find the file now. So it's showing a different error just because we don't have any tests here yet. So let's just create an initial test. First of all, the first argument in this method is just the name of the test. And the second is an anonymous function that we can then use to assert things. So for example, we can say expect true is true. So if we run this now, this should pass. So we can see we have one test and it's passing. If I was to make this fail, I could say expect true to be false. And this will fail. And it gives us a nice message here saying the expected and the received. So we want to test this file that we created. Um, so we have this host class. So first of all, we need to import that. So we're going to do that like this, host. So now we're able to use the host class from inside here. So first of all, we're going to initialize the class. And this is going to create an instance of the class for us. So now we have a, an instance of host called host, and we're able to use that. So for our first test, we just want to say expect host.greet dot to be hello because we know that host.greet should return a string uh, that is hello cool and we might want to improve the name of this so we might just say should greet like that okay so it's still passing that's good let's make it a little bit more complicated so imagine that this greet method might take a parameter which is someone's name so we want to be able to greet people uh, which have a name and if we don't pass in the name then we just want to call them a stranger so we just want to say hello stranger so let's start off with the most basic code here um, and it's definitely not the best code so we're going to say if someone passes in a name uh, then we want to return something Otherwise, we're going to return this hello stranger. 
So if someone passes in a name, we're going to return, let's use this as template. And let's say we're going to return hello and the name of that person. So now if we run our test, it should fail because we've changed the behavior here of the code. So we can see that it's expecting it to say hello, but we're getting hello stranger. So let's fix our test now. So we're not passing anything into greet. So it's returning hello stranger. Now we want to greet someone that has a name. So let's just say we want to greet John. So now this host.greet should return hello John. And it does. So we can see when we don't pass in a parameter, it's returning hello stranger. And if we do, it's returning hello John. Because these tests are quite similar, we might want to group them together. Because as we can see now, it's kind of treating them as just being in the same file, but we might want to group them together. So to do that, we can use describe. And similar to test, first of all, it takes a name. So we're just going to say host. And second, it takes an anonymous function. So we're just going to do this. And now we're going to put our tests inside there. Like that. So now when we run this, we should see kind of something inside. And I made a mistake here. This should be describe. So now we can see they're kind of grouped inside host. So this is good. If we had a bunch of different test files and tests, we want them to be able to be grouped like this because it makes them easier to read and understand. So now imagine that our host wants to be able to do something else. Uh, first of all, actually, let's do some refactoring here. So now we know we have this functionality and it works because we have some tests that cover that. So now we're able to refactor this function in confidence. Um, we know that we can refactor this and if our tests still pass, then the behavior hasn't changed. So we know that everything still works. So I purposely wrote this code in the beginning because it, it definitely isn't the cleanest and could be optimized. So let's do that now and let's see if our test still passes. So we could actually improve this to be something like return hello. And then we want to append onto that name. And if name doesn't exist, we want to append on stranger. So this one line will actually do the same as this entire block. So if we remove that now and our test still passes, we know that we haven't changed the behavior. Great. So our two tests are still passing, even though we changed the code. So next we want to add some more functionality to our host. So as well as greeting, we want our host to be able to say farewell. And the same as before, we're going to pass in a name. And this is going to be the same as this, except it's going to be farewell or goodbye. So now if we run our tests, we're going to have the same two tests. Um, we aren't testing this farewell yet. And we're going to be able to see something here, which is pretty cool. So right now we're just calling jest without any parameters. Now we want to pass in coverage. So this is just two dashes and coverage. And if we pass this in and run our test again, we can see we're now getting some useful information here. So we can see that we're getting some code coverage on this host.js file. And because this function isn't tested at all, um, it's reducing the amount of coverage that we have. So we only have 50% um, coverage on branches and we only have 66% coverage on lines. So if we run it again with this commented out, we can see that now we're getting 100%. And there's something even more useful here. So if I uncomment that, so we run our test again, we can see that it also gives us this coverage directory. And inside here, if we go inside this lcov report, we have this index.html file. So let's just copy the path of that. And inside the browser here, we're going to look at that. So we can actually see some information here. We can see um, that visually, in a visual way, that this host file 
only has 66% coverage on its statements. And if I comment this out and run the tests again, this should increase. And we can see now we have 100% coverage. Great, and we even get some, some nice visuals here of what's covered. Okay, so let's comment this out again and run our tests and we're going to just see here um, what isn't covered and then we're going to try to cover that. So we can see that these these lines obviously aren't covered yet because we don't have any tests. So now inside our test file we're going to copy both of these and I probably should have unique names here so this should be should greet a stranger and should greet a named person. And the same with these. And we're still calling greet here. So instead of calling greet, we want to call farewell. The same here. And let's give him a different name. Let's give her a name, Mary. So host our farewell. This should be goodbye stranger and let's leave this as hello john for now just to see if it fails cool so now we can see we have three tests or four tests three of them passed one of them failed um but we have 100 percent coverage which is great nice uh, so now let's just fix this one failing test So now it should pass. Nice. So there's one other thing that I can see that could be improved here, and that is we have some duplication here. So inside every test, we're creating this instance of host, and this is quite repetitive. So it is good to start every test with a clean slate. So it, we probably shouldn't reuse um, this the same instance of host across all the tests, even though now it wouldn't really matter because this is completely stateless. But imagine if host started to have some state. We we would want each test um, to start off with a clean slate and not um, not be impacted by other tests. So to do that, uh, let's start off in a good way. We're going to create this host variable, which is let. It's not const because we want to change its value, and we're going to change its value in this before each function. So this is basically. Um, a method that's going to be called before each test. Um, there's also a before all and an after each and an after all. Um, but let's just use the before each here. And inside the before each, we're basically going to be calling this. So this is going to instantiate a new instance of host before each test and assign it to host. So that means we're able to remove all of these duplicated lines. And before each test, we're creating a new instance of host and using that for the test. So if we run the test again, it should pass and it does. So that was um, just some of the basics of testing JavaScript using Jest. We're going to follow on here um, in the next videos by testing some React components and also mocking during tests. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.